Welcome back to another edition of America in Black. I'm CBS News correspondent Danya Backus. We want to begin our show by exploring a health crisis impacting far too many black women and families. In the United States, black women are three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications than white women, numbers among the highest in the developed world. Tonight, you will hear painful stories of lives lost, and you will hear from those trying to address the crisis, including the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. Can you point to the flower, Charlotte? Where's the flower? Point to the flower. Good job, high five. I love being a father. Charlotte is a joy. I didn't plan on being a single parent, though. I wanted to be a parent with my wife, Shanice. Anthony Wallace and his wife Shanice were ecstatic when they found out she was pregnant with their first child. It didn't matter to me whether it was a girl or a boy. I was just so happy that we were having a child together. Anthony says he and Shanice, a chief resident in pediatrics at the Indiana University School of Medicine, had started making plans for their baby girl. We we're expecting that we had a smooth pregnancy, we're gonna have a smooth delivery, we're gonna raise our child together. But that plan began to unravel when around her 36th week, during a routine prenatal checkup, doctors discovered Shanice had preeclampsia, persistent high blood pressure that develops during pregnancy or the postpartum period. She had to have an emergency C-section. They performed the cesarean and Charlotte is born. But things began to go downhill for Shanice. Anthony was told Shanice was experiencing internal bleeding. And she is somewhat verbal. What were those conversations? Letting her know I'm here and she's telling me she's okay. She gets taken to the ICU. So it's the last time I heard her voice. Whew. Um, Two days after giving birth, Shanice died. She was 30 years old. Anthony's unimaginable grief is mixed with anger. He believes his wife's death could have been prevented. She was voicing that she was having pain in her body. And the doctor looked at her and said, you're just having a panic attack. They weren't listening to her. Do you think race was a factor in Shanice's death? It was definitely a factor. Tragically, Shanice's story is rapidly becoming more common in the United States, especially among black women. According to the CDC, the maternal mortality rate in 2021 was 89% higher than the rate in 2018. Nationwide, black women are three times more likely to die during pregnancy than white women. These numbers and lives lost have drawn the attention of the White House in our exclusive interview, Vice President Kamala Harris said addressing the issue of maternal mortality is one of her priorities. The United States, being one of the richest countries in the world, has one of the highest rates of maternal mortality. It's a health care crisis in America happening right before our eyes. And I felt the need to take it on in a substantial way. These stories should compel all of us to take on this crisis. Since becoming vice president, Kamala Harris hosted the first ever maternal day of action at the White House and recently toured the baby to baby distribution headquarters in Los Angeles, dedicated to providing supplies and resources to mothers in need. When you look at the statistics, they are staggering. Yeah. Why are black women in particular dying at that rate? Well, one reality of it that may be hard for some people to hear is because um, she's black. When she walks into that clinic, that doctor's office, that hospital, she is not taken as seriously. Another reality of this issue is that it has nothing to do with her socioeconomic level or her educational level. It literally has to do with the color of her skin and the biases that are present in the system. One of the things you've really pushed for is implicit bias training yes. for medical workers. Yes. Why is that so important? Data tells us that recent medical association surveys that when they have questioned medical students that a significant number of them still carry 
biases around whether black people have a different pain threshold. I mean, it's shocking to think that that is possible. As hard as we try, we have not fully undone the 400 years of systemic racism that have been taking place in the United States. Dr. Amanda Williams is one of the preeminent leaders in maternal mortality and health equity and an adjunct professor at Stanford University School of Medicine. Unfortunately, the United States is the most dangerous developed country in the world to have a baby. There's no one that's even close. And for black women and birthing people, those statistics are even worse. This is not a problem that goes away with access to top doctors, top hospitals, and good insurance policies. Serena Williams! Even Serena Williams had to advocate for herself when she experienced life-threatening complications after the birth of her daughter, Olympia. Half of the deaths are in the postpartum period. So we are not out of the woods once the baby is out. To address this issue and others, Vice President Harris proposed legislation that, among other things, extends postpartum Medicaid from 60 days to one full year, creates a designation for certain proven hospitals as birthing friendly, and also allocates billions of dollars to diversify the maternal health care workforce. One element the vice president and many healthcare workers believe can help save women's lives during and after childbirth is the increased use of doulas who provide physical, emotional, and informational support. Here she is. Felicia Francis Edwards is a doula who has spent her career dedicated to maternal and child health. She works with Frontline Doulas, a community program that provides free access to care for black mothers in Los Angeles. I had so many women say that the off top first meeting, I'm afraid I'm going to die. You've seen firsthand mm -hmm. the bias that women experience. Absolutely. I've seen the doctors say really inappropriate things. I've watched people dismiss um, black women. Our work is important because a lot of times we go to spaces where we're the only other brown black face there. I got to support you. I'm going to educate you. I'm going to teach you advocacy so that you can put yourself in a position to make an informed choice. The ultimate goal is that we end these disparities and that there are no barriers to a woman being able to have a joyful pregnancy and delivery of a healthy child. That's the, the ultimate goal. Bubbles! Whoa! We're excited! It's the joy of childbirth. Anthony Wallace wants every woman to experience and why so many are working to ensure children, like two-year-old Charlotte, don't have to grow up without their mothers. Mommy, Daddy, and Charlotte. Yeah. In 2022, Anthony filed a complaint against the hospital where Shanice gave birth and died. And he says he plans to file a formal lawsuit. We reached out to the hospital for comment. They did not respond to our questions. What is your hope by sharing your story? I want to help bring it in to black mothers losing their lives in childbirth. I want to bring more awareness to the black maternity crisis. It's gone on far too long. Who's the sweetest girl in the whole world?